Hey everybody, this is my figure eight puffer Butterbean. And I just set the camera up on the tripod and we shot several minutes of video of him having his dinner while I was talking about brackish water. But as usual, I wandered off on some tangent and got distracted and realized I wasn't really even talking about the same topic anymore after a while. And so we're just not going to worry about doing that video. So I'm really struggling to try to get a video out today about brackish water and brackish aquariums and whatnot. So I'm going to go for it freestyle here and see what kind of information I can get out there. And if nothing else, it'll at least be a start. So first of all, I want to say that brackish water is water that is saltier than fresh water, but is not salty enough to be marine water. He thinks he's getting more food. That's why he's running up and down in the glass like that. He's wait he thinks he sees me standing in front of the tank and that's why he thinks I'm gonna be giving him more food. So it's saltier than fresh water, but it's not salty enough to be marine water. Now a common mistake that a lot of people make is they think they can put aquarium salt and make the water saltier or raise the salinity of the water. And that is not brackish water. It does uh, make the water saltier, but aquarium salt is just sodium chloride. It's the same as table salt. Marine salts is a whole cocktail of different dissolved mineral salts, uh, which is why ocean water doesn't simply taste like salt water. It tastes like ocean water. It's got a very distinct taste, and that's because it's got a lot of different dissolved minerals in it. And that's what brackish water is. It's got some of that mineral salt, marine salt, dissolved into the water. So again, it's not enough to be salty enough to be marine water. You know, I couldn't keep saltwater fish in this tank, but it is definitely way too salty for something like skirt tetras or probably even African cichlids wouldn't be able to live in something like this. It's just got too much dissolved salts in it to be considered even hard freshwater. So the animals that live in this are special kind of animals. Most animals live in a very narrow range of specific gravity or salinity of water. And they are called stenohaline animals. Um, that basically means narrow range of salinity. And these would be all of your saltwater animals. These would be all of your freshwater animals. Um, you know, a saltwater fish has to stay in salt water, and it has to stay in the salt water that it's in. It has to stay in a very narrow range of salinity. And freshwater fish are likewise. You can't even really move a softwater fish into hard water without it suffering. But these kinds of fish in here, these live bears, the little gobies that are in there, and of course butter bean, are a type of animal known as urihaline, which means that it's a wide range of salinity. And they have mechanisms within their body where they can actually shift the osmoregulation. A freshwater fish actually has a higher uh, specific gravity inside of its cells than the water outside of its cells. So they have to struggle with preventing water from rushing into their cells all day. And saltwater fish are the other way around. The water outside their cells is much saltier than the water inside their cells. And so they have mechanisms built in to prevent themselves from being dehydrated and having all the water sucked out of their cells. Urihaline fish can switch between the two. If they move into saltier water, they can then preserve their own moisture and if they go into very fresh water, they can actually prevent all of the fresh water from flooding into their body and overhydrating them. But just because they have the ability to do this does not mean they can or should live in the far range of what's comfortable for them. And that's why these fish are typically called brackish fish. They're not really brackish fish. The environment they live in is brackish. The fish itself is a urihaline animal. Again, that means it can move between a wide range of salinities, but it's still got that sweet spot. It's still got a place where it likes to live. And for the fish that are in this tank, these are all fish that like to live in very low end brackish. You could probably even get away with putting a puffer in really hard water, but I still think uh, brackish, low-end brackish, is going to be 
uh, your best bet for keeping a figure eight puffer. Uh, Molly's will do okay with just aquarium salt in the water. It's better than nothing, but Molly's do really well in low end brackish. You'll have Molly's that will absolutely thrive in low end brackish, and Molly's really struggle in very uh, soft water that doesn't have a lot of dissolved solids in it. So if you do have Molly's, putting a little bit of dissolved uh, aquarium salts in there will never go amiss with Molly's. Again, they can do very well all the way up into marine water. Um, ocean Molly's, you know, or, or saltwater Molly's, as they're often called, aren't anything special. They're just Molly's that happen to live in salt water. I could take these Molly's right here and move them into ocean water, and they would be fine. So... Just because they can do that, though, does not necessarily mean that being in marine water is the best for mollies or being in fresh water is going to be the best for this puffer. So when you see them in fish stores and they're sold in fresh water and they're sold as fresh water, you might get a couple of years of life out of one of these fish in fresh water. But if you put it in its proper environment, in a brackish environment, you might get 15 years out of it. So just because something can live, and we're going to probably get interrupted here with some squeaking. Squeaker just walked in the door. So again, just because this fish can live in fresh water uh, does not mean that it should be there for any kind of long-term duration. So recently I lowered the specific gravity. And once again, I haven't bothered to check and, you know, for the reasons I'm talking about is why I haven't bothered to check. I don't really have to. I've lowered the specific gravity in the tank. I know I did that simply because I did a water change and I put fresh water back in the tank instead of the brackish water that I normally replace it with. And so, therefore, I reduced the specific gravity in the tank. What I reduced it to, you know, that's not really relevant. I don't really care because it's not anything that has to be a certain anything. I could go all the way down to pure fresh or I could reduce it a little bit. These fish can just switch gears when the specific gravity changes. I think he's finally realized he's not getting fed. Now he's going to go looking around and see if he missed anything. So these fish can very, very quickly um, switch gears from being in fresh water to being in saltier water or brackish water. If you're a regular viewer of mine, uh, you'll know that recently I've had some fish jump out of one of my freshwater tanks and land in one of my brackish tanks, and one was a molly. I've had some guppies do that. I've had some freshwater sculpins do that, and they've all been fine, and that is simply because they're urihaline animals. They can adapt to being in a different specific gravity. So if you're going to keep a brackish aquarium then you don't need any kind of special equipment other than the marine salt. You don't need a marine um, filter like a, a protein skimmer. You don't need any special um, nitrogen cycle equipment or anything like that. In fact, it's the same species of bacteria that live in freshwater that go all the way up to the very high end brackish so unless you're dabbling in the very low end marine water you can squeeze out one of your aquarium filters from one of your freshwater tanks to get your cycle started in your brackish aquarium it's very much like maintaining a freshwater aquarium except you have to you know dissolve a little bit of marine salts into the water to get the specific gravity roughly where you want it. Again, it doesn't have to be precise. Uh, I do have a refractometer just because I like to be able to measure things when I want to. I also needed to figure out where to get it in the first place. And so, you know, I experimented with using this much and measuring it and checking. And eventually I figured out roughly how much salt I have to mix into how much water to get it to where I want it. And I no longer really have to measure the specific gravity. Again, I just sort of scoop out as much salt as I normally use and I dissolve it. And if it's a little higher or if it's a little lower, it really does not make any difference. It's going to affect those plants in the tank more than it's going to affect the fish. Again, by definition, urihaline means wide range of salinity. So the fish can bounce around, but that doesn't necessarily mean they should. So, in my case, the reason I've lowered the specific gravity is I want to see if it will have an impact on the 
uh, reddish brown sort of cyanobacteria that grows in this tank. You can see sort of a red patch of it in the back on the bottom there. And then, of course, we've got bits of it all over the plants that are growing in here. And that is java fern, believe it or not. It grows very stunted in this salty water. Uh, I also have sort of markings all over Butterbean. I'm not sure what they are. They look like they've been clearing up, but they're not gone. And I'm just not really sure what they are. It's been suggested by some people that maybe putting them in some fresher water, if it's some sort of parasitic growth or who knows what it is, but it can't hurt to just switch his water up a little bit. Uh, these animals, again, in the wild will swim from being in fairly salty water, they can swim upstream a little bit and end up in very fresh water and then back into some salty water in a very short period of time. So I actually believe that where these fish are found in the wild is fresh water for the most part. Uh, it's very hard water, but it is actually fresh water and I'm not sure why, but they always just seem to do better in brackish water when they're kept in aquariums. So if you do get a puffer, don't let anybody tell you it's a freshwater fish. They really do need to be in brackish water for their long-term health and you'll get years and years out of them if you keep them that way. So again, I'm going to just go ahead and call that the end of this video. It's a little uh, disheveled. I've had kind of a unexpected day. I was expecting to be down here this morning shooting this video and a bunch of different stuff happened and I never got down here to do it and etc etc so this is as good as it's going to get so hopefully i'll be able to do some more uh in the future if you got any questions and i'm sure you do after all that uh please leave them in the comment section below uh, i'll either get back to you or it will be able to add food for thought for my next video and maybe i can answer some of those questions if i've uh, raised any or failed to answer any so thanks for watching this one Make sure you subscribe. You never know what you're going to get with me. Sometimes it's this. Sometimes it's a little better than this. But don't forget, this one here is my brackish tank. I'll see you real soon in the next one.